Basis Juice presented by Points Bet Sportsbook. I'm the prop queen, Ariel Epstein. Yesterday was historic in Major League Baseball. We also have picks coming up tonight. I've got a new segment that we're branding, which here at Points Bet Sportsbook, we're going to start looking at marquee matchups where you can go get the value on some of my favorite plays of the night at literally only Points Bet, giving you the best odds that you'll probably get from any of the books. Definitely make sure to tune in towards the end of the show for my favorite game to look at tonight. Last night, it was crazy. First time in 129 years we saw this happen, where we saw 12 teams score double-digit runs. Four separate games ended with both teams scoring double-digit runs, tied the MLB record for most in a day. 12 teams scored double digits, tied for the second most in a day in MLB history. The last time that we saw that many teams score double-digit runs was back in 1884. As for the games that were in double digits, I'm going to get to that in a second. Nine of the 15 games yesterday, though, went over their total. Diamondbacks beat the Braves 16 to 13. This total was 10, and you end up with 29 runs. Arizona was plus 170 on the money line to win this game outright. Got great value there. Back to the total, Truist Park in Atlanta. Third most profitable park this year for overs at 29, 19, and 1 over under this season. It was... An epic game since it was the first time that two teams scored 13 or more runs in the first eight innings of a game since Yankees and Red Sox in 2019. It's the only time in D-backs history that both teams scored at least 13 runs. The NL NL East, the Braves, they're still leading the way. They've lost three straight, yet Arizona did snap their four-game losing streak. Arizona's now minus 150 to make the playoffs, which has actually gone down. Arizona was in that minus $2 range about right around the All-Star break. Now they're 8-1 to one to win the National League West, which now falls behind the Giants, who are plus 360. The Dodgers minus 295. The Giants are minus 330 now to make the playoffs. Arizona is starting to trend down a little bit. Is it the inexperience that's kicking in? Are they going to be in the playoffs? Is there some value to betting Arizona to not make the playoffs because of the inexperience? At the moment, I'm looking at the O's as a better young team than Arizona. Prior to the All-Star break, both these teams were neck and neck for World Series odds, division odds, make the playoff odds. The O's continue to be hot. Diamondbacks, not so much. Um, It's going to be interesting. The National League West. At any moment, you're going to see the Giants in Arizona. They're just going to keep flipping. Um, But the Giants are on a hot streak right now. They got a win last night. They beat the Reds 11-10. Another high-scoring game that went over their total. The total was 11. Yet both these teams, well, the Giants hit it on their own with 11 runs, and the Reds came pretty close. feel bad for the Reds. They've just been so hot, and they still haven't picked up a win since the All-Star break. Earlier in the day, these two teams played the remaining of Game 1. It was supposed to be played Monday night. Rain stopped it, so the Giants won that Game 4-2. to two. Wilmer Flores hit two home runs for San Francisco, and he homered twice off Luke Weaver. Um, Flores had three home runs in the two games yesterday, as or two days ago as well. And this was the third game on Tuesday that finished with a score of 11-10, to 10, the first time in MLB history three games on the same day finished with the same score. Cincinnati's lost six straight games, matching its season high. Yet, leave it to Cincinnati, who calls up another player from the minor leagues. Their prospect, Christian Encarnacion Strand, the longest name in baseball, hit a a pinch hit three-run homer for his first MLB hit. He DH'd in the first game hitless. Encarnacion Strand ended up playing third after pinch hitting Tuesday, and Spencer Steer slid to left field. He's another now Reds player that could put runs on the board. It's amazing. I don't know what's in the water in AAA in Cincinnati with those Reds. However, every player they call up seems to turn to gold at the moment. If you're in the Red system, you better hope you get called to the big leagues. Encarnacion Strand, too. He sticks to just Encarnacion on the back of his jersey. It was too long of a name to put on the back, but, I mean, he still hit a deep ball last night. That's all that really matters. As for the Mets, they beat the White Sox 11-10, another 11-10 game. Congratulations, Mets fans. You actually won as a favorite. You were minus 120. The total was 9, so the White Sox and the Mets go over the game total on their own team totals. The Mets almost blew this one again. If it wasn't for the Yankees game being on, I probably would have turned it on to watch the meltdown. The Mets were up 8-2, 11-4. 
Then the White Sox made it interesting, scoring six runs in the last three innings. The Mets had four home runs in the game, including a pair from Francisco Alvarez. David Robertson just able to edge out this one uh, with the 11-10 win for the Mets. It's going to be – there's a lot of trade rumors going around about Justin Verlander as well. Says he's committed to being with the Mets, yet he's under team control through next year. Verlander has been pitching better of late. See if he stays with New York or not uh, come – the rest of the season, August 1st trade deadline. Two teams that probably will be sellers, the Royals and the Tigers, they had another 11-10 to 10 game. Royals won as plus 120 underdogs. Total was 8.5 in that one, so this one was 21 runs on an 8.5 total. Kansas City led 11-6, entering the top of the ninth, and then Detroit, they nearly completed the comeback. Tigers first baseman Spencer Tork- Torkelson, he hit two home runs. Royals somehow put up 11 runs with no home runs, just 11 runs. Honestly, they should teach the Yankees a thing or two since the Yankees can't score on anything but home runs, so that's pretty impressive, Kansas City. Detroit's lefty Turk Skubal made his third start of the season. He went, he nearly missed, I mean, he missed almost a year of surgery after his left elbow surgery, and he allowed seven runs and eight hits, striking out three over four innings. Tigers are 25-1 to to make the playoffs. Royals aren't even listed on the board. Outside of those four games, the Dodgers, Guardians, Cubs, and Twins also scored at least 10 runs. We saw six players hit multiple home runs yesterday. First time this season that six players accomplished that. All-time record is 10 players hitting multi-home runs. The Yankees lost 5-1 to one again yesterday to the Angels. Shohei Otani, the Angels' two-way star. He leads Major League Baseball not only in home runs at 35. After yesterday's game against the Yankees, Otani leads baseball with seven triples. He's now minus 800 to win AL MVP. It was minus 700 yesterday when we did the show. Minus 800. Oh, and yeah, we gave out Otani to drive in a run at over half an RBI at plus 140. He did that for us with the triple that put him at the top of the triples list in Major League Baseball. He's unreal. The best punishment for the Yankees is to not talk about him, so we won't. Shohei Otani is insane. He is a monster, and I can't wait to see every single night what he does for the rest of the season if he gets traded. I'm so sick of this conversation, Um, but Otani over an RBI is just a play every single night. He has been a top three. He has the third most RBIs in baseball, and he just every time he's home, he's now scored 11 RBIs in or 12 RBIs in his last 11 home games. Great. Coming up next, best bets for tonight's slate of games. Stay right here on Basis Juice. Welcome back to Basis Juice presented by Points Bet Sportsbook. Time for picks for today. Starting with a day game, it's the Baltimore Orioles facing off with the Los Angeles Dodgers, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. I like the O's at plus 125 on the money line. It is the first time that the Orioles righty Dean Kramer is going to face the team that drafted him, the Dodgers. Kramer was part of that deal for Manny Machado going to Baltimore for Kramer and Machado going to L.A. The O's have the sixth highest OPS in daytime games versus the Dodgers, who actually have an 18th ranked OPS during the day. Baltimore is also the fourth most profitable home team in baseball. If you've bet every money line for Baltimore at home, you're doing very well this season, about eight units of profit. Second best team off a loss as well. 22 and 14 straight up the O's coming off L's. They lost yesterday to the Dodgers. And the Dodgers lefty, Julio Urias, 5-6-0 daytime ERA this year, 6-8-9 road ERA this season. O's money line plus 125. Next play, it's the Philadelphia Phillies facing the Milwaukee Brewers. I like the Phillies' team total over of four and a half runs, around minus 130. Now, the Milwaukee Brewers have their righty Colin Ray on the mound, who has a 5-1-4 ERA in his last five starts. Versus Ray's pitch mix, the Phillies have a 287 batting average, which is the third best against that repertoire in baseball. Philly at home is scary. They have the 10th best OPS when playing at home. Their lefty pitcher, Christopher Sanchez, 4-4-3 ERA at home, which is not great. However, because Philly can put up runs with a plus 13% increase in home runs at Citizens Bank Park due to weather today, I like the Phillies' team total over of four and a half runs. Don't really see the Brewers scoring much. They haven't scored much lately. In addition to the Brewers getting Sanchez, who they really are more of an average lineup against, a little bit below. So I don't want to get the full game over here. 
I like the Phillies. At least I know their lineup should be able to score tonight as is it at Citizens Bank Park. Detroit's lefty Eduardo Rodriguez take his over of five and a half strikeouts. Detroit uh, is one of those teams. Well, Erod has actually gone over in four of his five games against high K rate teams. Kansas City, third highest K rate against lefties, sixth highest against Erod's repertoire. Plus, Kansas City, 15 and 10 over under uh, their K props, these lefty pitchers. When Kansas City faces them, these lefties, 15 and 10 over under their K prop, averaging about five strikeouts to start. Erod over five and a half Ks. Now it's time for our marquee match. This one's between Toronto and San Diego. Toronto minus 120 on the money line is my favorite play here. However, you could get the plus 175 on the run line laying one and a half with Toronto. If you want a deal, the reason it's a deal is because if you get a minus 120 home money line, it's equivalent to about minus, uh, plus 159 on the run line if you're laying runs. You're getting about 16 cents better value of that run line play for the expected run line versus what we're giving you at points bet. You could look at the run line. I just don't always love laying runs at home because you might not get the bottom of the ninth inning if you're up by a run. However, Toronto money line is a good play because the Blue Jays have won 10 of Barrios 13 starts. The righty Jose Barrios is starting today for Toronto. Barrios has gone 6-3 and three with a 2-6-1 ERA. He pitches better at home than he does on the road. Toronto fourth best bullpen ERA this month. Toronto's also 22-19 and 19 straight up after a loss. Then on the other side, you've got the Padres starter, Yu Darvish, who has a 5-5-2 road ERA, 3-8-3 at home. Darvish is on the road. He's always been a fade on the road the last few years. The Padres bullpen's been struggling. Fourth highest ERA this month with a 6-2-3. That's why I like Toronto today. Minus 120 on the money line. Or if you just want that extra value play at plus 175, you can go and get that minus 1.5 for Toronto. I'm going to keep with the fading of you, Darvish, by betting is under a 5.5 Ks. It's in plus money, which is really good value as well. He's gone under in all five games that he's faced a low K rate team. The Blue Jays, they strike out about 21% of the time, which is the ninth lowest in baseball against a righty with the same repertoire as Darvish. For Darvish, it means he has to face, on average, about 29 Toronto batters. Darvish's season high this year is 27 batters that's in 16 starts in order for Darvish to get six or more strikeouts he'd have to face the most batters he's faced in a season nonetheless in the spot that he is on the road against the low carry team Toronto seventh lowest K rate against righties under five and a half K's for you Darvish tonight that's a broad here on basis juice presented by points bet sportsbook I'm the prop queen Ariel Epstein good luck with your bets <laughs> Whether it's the spread, money line, or over-under total runs, make sure you're betting within your means every year from April through October. Budget your bets just like you do for drinks and hot dogs at a game.